We're continuing our series on the book of Acts, and today I wanted to take a look at another one of those parallels between the lives of Peter and Paul in the book of Acts as they share in this similar trajectory that's going to culminate in both of them ending up in Rome and both of them being martyred for their faith if, if uh, the Christian tradition holds true. But in the book of Acts specifically, we see a number of instances where Peter and Paul uh, do similar things, and, and it's meant to demonstrate how they are both uh, kind of equal apostles in their ministry for Christ, uh, establishing Paul as uh, kind of this, this uh, man that is on the same level as the Apostle Peter in his apostolic ministry to the Gentiles, whereas lots of Peter's ministry was focused on the Jewish people. Paul is now the, the apostle to the Gentiles. And so uh, you may remember from the last video I talked about how both Peter and Paul in the book of Acts rebuke magicians. Um, you may remember how both of them uh, heal a man who was uh, crippled from birth. And now in Acts 20, we're going to see the Apostle Paul raise a young man named Eutychus back to life uh, in a story that is similar to how Peter raised a young woman named Dorcas back to life uh, who was uh, who was who had died and was laying in an upper room. Well, Paul is going to heal Eutychus, a young man who fell from an upper room uh, back to life. And so I wanted to take the, a look at the story in Acts chapter 20 and kind of clarify a few things for you so that when you're reading it, it, it makes a little bit more sense. So this is Acts 20 verse seven. It says on the first day of the week, when we were gathered together to break bread. So this is the kind of the, the norm of early Christian gatherings, they would uh, gather together on the first day of the week. In Greek, that's really saying on the first after the Sabbath. And so we know Sabbath begins sundown on Friday and goes till sundown on Saturday. So really, they're, they're not gathering on the first day of the week like Sunday morning. They're gathering on uh, the, the first after the Sabbath, which is to say Saturday evening. So they've come together. They're going to share in this meal. They're going to share in the Eucharist, the sacrament, uh, communion, you might call it. And uh, they're going to have this uh, extended time of fellowship and, and eating together. And Paul has just come into the city, so he's going to meet with this group of Christians, and they're going to have this unique opportunity to learn directly from the Apostle Paul. And so he's there with them, he's shared in this meal with them, and now he's teaching them. And the text says that uh, since Paul is uh, intending to leave the next day from this city, he prolongs his speech, meaning... Uh, from uh, after the meal on sundown on Saturday, he speaks to them for an extended period of time, multiple hours, and it says he goes until midnight. So you can imagine uh, if this is happening after dinner, after a meal is shared on Saturday evening and Paul's been talking for a long time, it's only natural that some people might get a little bit sleepy. I know for a fact that on Sunday mornings, when I preach, I've seen some people kind of nodding off and falling asleep. So it's not unusual what's happening here, but it is a little bit funny uh, because the text goes on to say in verse 9, a young man named Eutychus, which is uh, kind of a, a funny name. It means uh, lucky or fortunate in Greek. And there's some disagreement about whether this was his actual name or a nickname that stemmed from this story. Uh, but a young man named Eutychus was sitting at the window and he sank into a deep sleep as Paul talked still longer. That's just a funny, funny detail to think about. And being overcome by sleep, he fell down from the third story and was taken up dead. So now this, this uh, amazing moment where the apostle has come, shared a meal with them, uh, shared the sacrament with them, and is teaching them has turned into this tragic moment because a young man has died. But it says Paul went down and bent over him, and in Greek that's kind of saying he stretched himself out over him, and this uh, should remind you of some stories in the Old Testament. The, the ones that come to mind for me are stories of uh, Elijah and Elisha uh, raising dead sons back to life, and both of them did so by kind of throwing themselves over the body. Elisha literally laid over the body, put his head against his head, his nose, and his mouth over the, the body that was dead, and uh, stretched themselves over these bodies to raise them back to life. So this is reminiscent of some Old Testament stories from the book of Kings. Uh, but Paul here stretches himself over the boy and takes him in his arms and, and says, don't be alarmed for his life is in him. And when Paul had gone up and had broken bread in Eden, he conversed with them a long while until daybreak and so departed. And they took the youth away alive and were not a little comforted. So Paul here by, by the power of Jesus Christ has miraculously healed this young man in a way that reminds us of Peter earlier in the book of Acts, Acts chapter nine. 
and in a story that is reminiscent of uh, Old Testament prophets like Elijah and Elisha. And it's just kind of this funny little story that uh, Luke has included in the Acts narrative. Uh, I, I think it, it's meant to be uh, humorous. I think that the detail of uh, this young man named Lucky falling asleep while uh, this apostle is preaching to him is a funny little detail. And it's just an, an, another fun insight into uh, the book of Acts and, and kind of the gathering of the early church, what it looked like, what they did when they gathered. And so I hope that this has been insightful to you and interesting to you. I hope that you'll continue to join us as we wrap up the book of Acts here in the next couple of weeks. And we seek to uh, rediscover what it means to be the church, just like the early church and what it means to uh, live with a mission to bring all people uh, to reconciliation through Jesus Christ. So thanks for watching. Have a great week, and we'll see you Sunday morning.